Hey, it's Red Sun Moose, another Minecraft video for you today. And I have finished building my second computer. My first computer wasn't actually a computer at all, it was just a full data loop, but this one can be called a computer. It is the Moose 2, and it's clocked at 0.29 Hz currently. That's the most stable speed that I've found it runs at. You can make it run quicker by editing the clock over here. But I found that it ran pretty well at this speed. So, there's been a lot of changes since the last computer. One of them being a larger ALU with more functions. There are eight functions on this ALU. Also, we have more RAM registers and they run better. Um, two are dedicated to input A and two are dedicated to input B. And over here, we have our program memory which is has been added since the last one that's why the last one wasn't a full data loop but here we go it is tape piston memory I just wanted to try building it just to see how it run in a computer haven't seen them used often so why not so there is plenty of lines of code for you to program on I'm gonna teach you how to program later in the video but first I'm going to complete showing you around so um and here we have our control panel. Um, this is reading the program. This turns the clock on or off. This runs or stops the clock. And this is an indicator light, so you know if the clock is running. Over here we have our 4-bit display and 4-bit inputs. This whole computer, like the last one, is 4 bits, like the previous full data loop. Over here we have just one bit of RAM per input into the ALU. This is just to keep the numbers in coming out and so it, they don't just blink when they come in. They actually stay in until this is updated again. I'm going to pause the video and enter in a little bit of code. It's going to be code for a half adder and then we're going to run it and see how it works. So I'll be back. Alright, so this program takes up four lines of code. It's starting here and reading this way as it feeds through the system. So this is, as soon as we start, it's going to get pushed here in red. And then this one's going to be red at the end. This bit right here, all it's doing is telling the computer to stop to keep it just from cycling over and over again. I will flash the code on the screen right about now. As you can see, the first line is just taking the XOR values from input A and input B and storing it to register 1 in RAM. Then it's taking the AND values of input A and input B and storing it to register 3. And finally, it's getting the XOR values of register 1 and register 3 and putting it to display, then stopping. So let's go over to the computer itself over here. and let's try running it. These values appear from a previous program but they'll reset as soon as it gets to a line that displays it. So this unlike a full ladder will not give you the answer because it can't carry over but we can get we can get pretty darn close so um, I'm gonna do 3 and 8 uh, and 10 so the answer would be 13, but I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, so I'm going to run. Oh, it turns out this was the last program I ran in it because the output was the same. And as you can see, it did not show us 13 because 2 and 2 were selected and with half adders they can't carry over. That's the one issue I will go out and tell you with this computer is that there's no carry out in the ALU so you cannot have a full ladder sadly. I'll have to improve upon that in the future. I've already been working on a new ALU to work in Moose 3. Alright this brings us to the programming section of the video. I've planned out a little curriculum for you guys. We're going to be start by just displaying a gate, the values from a gate, onto our display over there. 
Then we're going to mess with the RAM a little bit. And finally, we're going to end it by linking multiple gates together. So this is the part where you download the world file from the description below and load it up in your Minecraft and follow along. So only if you want to learn how to program it. Well, I guess you wouldn't need to follow along to learn how to program it, but it would help. I need to stop overcomplicating this. But anyways, we have a chart here that explains how the program works. The first three bits are the operation. The second two bits are the number A. The third two bits are number B. Then we have three bits of for the destination and one bit for the flow. So these three are the operation. These two are in A. These two are in B. And these three are the destination and the flow. The flow tells the computer whether or not to continue or stop, which is very helpful. It keeps it from just cycling through over and over again. So to start by just displaying a gate, why don't we do, I don't know, let's do just the AND values. So we're going to leave this at zero of input A and input B. Then we're going to put that to display and tell it to stop. So we can go down to this control panel just to deselect all these levers. And let's get the AND values. So we're going to do 1 and 1, so the 1 bit should be on. Next, we're going to just do 4 on this side. And then we can do, I don't know, let's do 8 and 8. So on this side, we have 13. And on this side, we have 9. So let's see what this is going to look like. Well, I already know what it looks like, but just as a little experiment, let's see what's going to happen. Alright, so we have the 1 bit on and the 8 bit on, and that is because 8 and 8 are on, 1 and 1 are on, but only one 4 bit is on, and both of the 2 bits are off. So, next let's have some fun with the RAM. So, what I'm going to be teaching you how to do is how to put the A value into the B input into a gate. Like before, like I said before, we have two registers per number. So number A has three and four dedicated to it, and number B has one and two dedicated to it. But say you want to put number A into number B into a gate for some odd reason. Not sure why you want to do that. Let's say we want an AND gate of both the number A and itself. That makes more sense. Alright, so what we can do is we can start by having OR, and that's just the gate I use to move data from one place to another. Then we can have input A. We don't need any B over here. And let's have this go to register 1, which is a B register. Next, we're going to have and, because we want to get the AND values of um, input A and input A. So whatever we put on input A should light up. So AND, input A, register 1, display, and then we're going to tell it to stop. Just for a demonstration, I'm going to flick all these B levers, just to show that they won't interfere with it at all. So let's have 5 display up there. As you can see, you got the AND values of A and A because 1 and 4 are both lit up up here. And we can go on over to register 1 and our RAM over here. And as we can see, yes, we got 1015 lit up. Alright, so to conclude today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to link multiple gates together. That half adder was using this process. So, um, say you want to have, I don't know, say you want to get an AND gate, and then have that go into an XOR, and then have that get inverted. So we're going to have first an AND gate, then second an XOR gate, and then third inverted.
So to begin, let's go ahead and have our AND gate of inputs A and B. So just I've done this so many times I just know what it looks like. Sorry if I'm going too fast. And let's let's store that in register one. Before we continue, I will explain a thing with the RAM registers. Say you want to take, I don't know, register 1, the AND of input A and register 1, and put it to register 1 again. That won't work. It'll just clear out register 1. That is another problem that this computer has. Well, I'm not really sure that'd be a problem, but it just can't do that. So you're going to have to store it to maybe a different register, and then use the OR gate to put it back to register 1, and then after doing that, you can reassign the register 2 values. But anyways, let's go ahead and continue. So we have the AND of input A, input B, register 1. So then let's take, I don't know, let's take that, let's take re register 1's value and put it with input A. So let's, um, actually let's not do that. Let's have a totally separate line. So let's go XOR, which is 4. Sorry, I'm a little wishy washy here. And then let's have input A and input B. And let's store that to, um, wait, we're going to have to invert them together at the end. So let's put that to 3. So this is very simple, um, similar, sorry, I don't know what happened there, to the half adder program in that you're taking two separate answers and putting them to two different registers, but you're not mixing them that yet. I'm going to mix them in the end with the by inverting the two. So since we have both A and B inputs in this last one, I'm going to use the NOR gate to invert them. So I'm going to have to reference this chart over here. It is three, so it's just a gate I don't use often. But anyways, let's go ahead and put in three. Um, register 3, register 1, and then let's have that go to display and have it stop. So just for a summary, what's happening here is we have the AND values of input A and input B stored to register 1, then the XOR values of input A and input B stored to register 3, and then at the end we're going to invert them both at the same time using the NOR gate, and we're going to have it go to display, then end. So, I, I don't really know what the truth table of this would look like. So I'm just going to put in random numbers. So, I don't know, let's go 6. And, I don't know, maybe 10. So let's run this. Alright, so this is a very interesting combination of gates. We only have the one bit on. If you want later, you can go back and you can look over all the things the computer was doing. and You can develop a truth table for what we just did and you can check it. And I guarantee you that that is correct. So that concludes the programming segment of today. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the Moose 2. I hope you download it and have fun messing around with it. If any of you come up with any neat programs for that, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be glad to try any of them out. I want to see what you guys can do with it. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. See ya.